Hey everyone, it's been a while since the last time I actually posted an audio recording around certain topics. Usually I will talk about Scorpio topics, spirituality, law of association, tarot tips, and so on and so forth. But for today, we are actually going to talk about can energies affect or change the outcome of the reading that was provided to you? If so, how and why? This is actually a very interesting topic, and it's something that I'm dying to discuss, which I also shared to some of my clients, okay? In order for you guys to be actually aware, okay? Awareness is key. And also to be informed, okay? Because I've learned this the hard way. All right, because normally I would actually get a lot of questions. I notice that people would ask me, when will I meet my soulmate? When will I get married? When is this person coming back? Right. That burning question when, which is normal. Of course, we wanted to know when is this going to happen? Right. But we must be aware and this is something that I always share to you guys, even on pick a card readings or personal readings, that time can change. Time is very fluid. And our energies do change. And we are all energies as well. And I'll explain in this entire audio recording how, okay, and why everything is actually, you know, um, not set in stone or nothing is set in stone. Okay, anything can change. All right, whether it's a good change or a bad change. All right, okay, so let's start off with this personal story. Okay, um, as you all know, and this is something I've always shared in audio recordings, that I grew up with a lot of psychics around me. Um, not only that, I have siblings who are also psychics, but my mom would also invite a lot of psychics inside the house to do a reading. Okay, and remember, in my early 20s, I would consult different psychics. Okay? Okay, because I'm so into it. And these psychics um, are not the usual tarot readers who will actually use cards. Okay, these psychics do not need cards at all. They're just going to stare at you. And, you know, some of them can even do a past life reading just by looking at you. No crystal balls, no tarot cards or what have you, okay? And um, they're so freaking amazing. I remember I actually visited this um, really awesome psychic. He's actually known as the Nostradamus of Southeast Asia. He was featured on television, newspapers, all right? And I actually paid a pretty huge amount of money for a less than 10 minutes of reading. <laughs> no kidding. Less than 10 minutes. But the crazy thing is, before I could speak, and this is no joke, before I could speak, he already told me the question that I have in my mind. And I was like, are you kidding me? What the freak? How did he do that? You know, I was blown away. So he already knows the question in my mind before I could actually ask, right? I was really blown away, guys. Totally blown away. And I was trying to find logic, but I couldn't, honestly. I really couldn't, okay? I don't even remember myself, you know, like muttering something. No. And it was not even a cold reading, because a cold reading goes like this. A psychic would actually ask you a lot of questions, all right? And based from your response, they can actually pick up something from it, all right? It's not a cold reading at all because I didn't say anything. And yet they were able to give me specific details that only I should know. All right. And so I remember visiting three psychics during that time. One of them is actually the Nostradamus of Southeast Asia. And it's so amazing that they were able to give me a specific month. Let's just say it's October. All right. Let's put it that way. They gave me a specific month. And they also told me some very specific details about how many kids will I have? Are they um, 
or I mean, are they a boy or are they uh, a girl, you know? Um, and at the same time, they were able to describe the clothes, which is so freaking weird. Up to that very tiniest details, even the clothes that my kids are wearing, okay? And um, the house, everything. And I was blown away because all three of them do not know each other. The reason why I actually consulted three different psychics was because I'm the type of a person that even though I actually believe psychics and I am surrounded by psychics growing up, I still am very skeptical, especially when I was a young kid. You know, I always wanted to find some answers. Okay, I always ask questions and this really frustrates some of them. <laughs> no kidding, but I would always ask questions. There should always be an answer to my question. And so the reason why I also consulted different psychics, because I am so curious as to what are they going to see? For instance, I actually consulted psychic A and this is what he said. And then I consulted Psychic B, and this is what they said. But the crazy thing is, all three psychics saw the very exact same thing, even the month. No kidding. No kidding. And they paid a huge amount of money for, for those personal readings, okay? Face-to-face -face readings. I paid a huge amount of money because I want to make sure that these are actually legitimate psychics, that if I'm going to shell out money, okay, that these psychics are not scammers, okay, or fraud. And uh, a psychic would actually be able to identify, by the way, just to let you know, guys, a psychic would be able to identify if you are also a fellow psychic, all right? Because we can actually read energy. We can actually pick up if somebody's really a psychic or not, all right? And so the crazy thing Going back to what I said was they were able to give me the exact details and the exact month, right? And so I got really excited. Let's just say they gave me the month of October. I got so freaking excited. It was like, oh my God, I can't wait. October. And it's very natural, right? We are human beings. When we get a very positive reading or when we actually get um, that very exciting thing that we just heard, we tend to get really jumpy about it, which is normal because we're human beings. Now, this is something that I also wanted to share to you guys, okay? And I believe I've already posted an audio recording around this, but I will repeat it again because it's related to this topic, okay? So in the past, I've already shared to you guys that if you received a positive or even a negative, especially a positive, okay, especially a positive reading from a psychic, you keep it to yourself. You do not tell a soul, not even your bestest friend, not even your mother, not even your spouse, okay? And now you're going to ask the question, why? I trust this person. This person is my bestest friend. I understand, and that's how I also think in the past, okay? That's how I also think. But as I always say, we are all energies, okay? And the thing is, even if we tell the most trusted person we know about this reading that you actually got from a psychic, you just don't know what they're really thinking and or what are their energies around it. OK, so maybe they would tell you like, oh, I'm happy for you. I'm so happy for you. You're going to be a millionaire by next month. But deep down, they're feeling really bad. You know, they feel, oh, gosh, lucky you. I wish I was that person. So there you go. There's that negative energy already. Right. So that's why I always say to you guys, if you get a very positive reading, you keep it to yourself. Number two, you do not talk about it 24-7 or think about it all the time, all the time. Because I'm that kind of a person. I'll be very honest, you know, I'm not perfect. Especially in the past, I was so excited. And when I get excited, I always think about it. And I can't wait for it to happen, okay? But there you go. Your own energies can alter or change 
the outcome of what was given to you. Because, number one, all right, you do not trust the divine or you do not trust the universe. If you want to call it universe, divine, Buddha, whatever. Okay, you surrender to the divine. At that time, that was spirit's message for you. And when it was given to you, you release it afterwards. And you just claim it and you say, and so it is. And then you go on with your life, day-to-day -day life, all right? I know it's easier said than done because I was there. And sometimes I still have that urge, right? Like to, to think about it, to go back to it. And that's why most, you know, psychics would also try to give an advice to their clients not to listen to the recording or any recording that a psychic would give you regarding your reading, to listen to it over and over and over again. Some of them, they're being advised to scrap it or just throw it away, you know, just delete it or put it in the trash. Just let it go. Because again, number one, you do not trust the reading that was given to you by spirit. Remember, psychics are not gods. Psychics are actually, yeah, some people, they try to put psychics on a pedestal way too much as if they're gods. No. Psychics are just like you. We are all human beings. We are all equal. Okay? So, psychics are not gods. That was just the energy that they can tap in at that very moment. But you should be aware that anything can change. And those psychics are actually just accepting messages. They're just vessels. Okay, to deliver a message that was meant for you to hear by spirit, by universe. So if you try to go back to it, talk about it all the time and overthink and overanalyze everything, that's actually, you know, a sign that number one, you don't trust. You don't want to surrender to the divine or to universe. Okay. So that's number one. Number two, right? Just like me, when I actually got that personal reading, I was so freaking excited. I was too jumpy. I can't wait. I was even counting, you know, the days. No kidding. Literally, I was counting it. I was counting it. And I was like, oh, gosh, it's already September. I can't wait. It's next month. October, they said. I was so excited like hell. And guess what? The month of October came. Nothing happened. And I was like, hey, okay, I should probably just give it a few more weeks because, you know, maybe on the third week of the month of October, who knows, right? Until it's already November and then it's already December and it's January. <laughs> So, in short, the reading that was actually given to me by those three awesome psychics never happened. So now, here's the question, guys. The million-dollar question. What happened? First, you're going to ask the question, are they fraud? Is it because they're not really good? I don't think so, because the fact, that's why I started off this recording, this story, telling you how good they are, because I know for a fact that these psychics are so good that they were even able to say the tiniest details that only I should know, okay? Even the person that they saw on that reading, and it's the person that I already know. <laughs> And I was like, that's impossible. How come they know that person? They know everything about me. Everything. And so I don't think that they're actually scammers or fraud. But still, you have that burning question in your mind. How come their prediction never happened? I'm saying this, guys, because I'm pretty sure you yourself... 
would encounter this. I'm pretty sure, ten thousand percent. Of course, not all of you, but there will be someone out there who would actually experience this, and who would say, "Oh my gosh, the same thing happened to me." The very same thing happened to me. A psychic told me that I'm gonna be with this person, or my person and I will reconcile this month of, let's say, August, and it never happened. But again, it's not because they're scammers, they're fake, or they're, you know, they're not really good. I don't think so. So before you judge someone, okay, remember just like what I said. Especially, you would know, identify for sure, especially if you're psychic yourself, consulting a fellow psychic. You would definitely identify if a person is truly psychic or not. And you can understand what I'm saying here, right? A psychic can actually know if the person they're talking to or conversing with has the same abilities. If not, they're really psychic. They're not just, you know, like faking it, okay? So I don't think that it's actually because they're not good. And we're talking about not just those three psychics, because I excluded my sister as well as my psychic friend. But they, too, described the same thing and saw the same thing. They weren't able to give the exact details as those three psychics, especially when it comes to the date. But they were able to... Give me, you know, some really juicy details. And so again, you'd go back to that same question. How come it never happened? All right. How come it never happened when they were able to see, you know, the very same things? And they gave the exact month. So that's the one thing I wanted to share to you guys. Not to rely too much on dates because it can change. Sometimes it will happen exactly the date or day that was provided to you. Of course, I'm not saying that is not possible. But what I'm saying is that it can change. So if you're wondering why is it that there are times that when you get a reading And this was the month, let's say, that was given to you and it never happened or the year that was given to you and it never happened. It was because nothing is set in stone. All right. Anything can change. There's a saying, right? Change is the only thing that is not permanent. All right. Nothing is set in stone, really, guys. So if you got a positive, whether a positive or a negative reading, anything can still change. Don't hold on to it too much. Let it go. Release it to the universe. And that's the hardest lesson, you know, for me. Because I'm also very impatient, all right? And I'm just a human being um, who got really excited, right? Especially if you get a positive reading, you will get all too jumpy. Like, I can't wait for that to happen. Oh, man. I was even counting the days and all that. So how or why did it change? Aside from the fact that, yes, nothing is set in stone, okay? But it can be a number of things. And one of those would be the example that I've given to you. Number one, your own energy or other people's energy can affect the outcome. That's why it's very important that you do not share it to anyone. Now, let's say you do not share it to anyone, okay? You, you didn't tell a single soul. But how come the prediction never happened? And so you're going to go back and wonder why, what's going on? I, I didn't tell anyone. But then, what was your energy? That's the question. What is your energy or what was your energy? So after a reading was given to you, you release it. You know, go back to it, you know, go back to it all the time and then ask another, you know, the same question to other people or try to overthink, overanalyze the same situation over and over and over and over. 
And the reason for that is because, like what I said, number one, you don't trust the spirit. You don't trust spirit. You don't trust universe. You don't trust the reading that was given to you by spirit because the tarot reader or the psychic is just a vessel. It's spirit communicating through the psychic. Right? So that's number one. Number two, because we get very excited, right? We get very jumpy. We tend to get what? Impatient. And that's a common mistake. It's actually easier said than done, I know. It's really challenging. Actually, this is really challenging because it's very hard not to get excited. It's very hard not to get really, you know, jumpy. Especially if it's a very positive reading. You would always think about it, right? I mean, imagine you would get a reading and a psychic would tell you, Hey, Joe, next month you're a multi-millionaire. Oh, my God. And you're like, oh, wow, well, I can't wait. And you're going to think, right? You're going to think of the many things that you want to buy, all right? You have lists of the things that you want to do with that millions of money, right? But again, anything can change. Your own energy can change. The outcome of the reading that was given to you, always remember that. Always remember that. Because it was a hard lesson for me. Okay? And like what I said, nothing is set in stone. Now, let's go back to that term, impatient. So, let me tell you why by being impatient, it can affect the outcome of the reading. The answer is simple. You're putting out a lack energy. That's why law of association, or rather law of attraction, law of manifestation, or manifestation, is so true. And this is something that my father taught me ever since I was a young girl. Even before the secret came out. No kidding. I've always heard this from my dad. Growing up, he would always talk to all of us and explain about the power of the mind. The law of attraction. Without using that exact same, oh, well, the law of attraction is something that he would always say, but not really like to the exact same thing, how the secret, right? The book or Rhonda Byron, you know, it's not exactly that, but it's the same thing, same energy. So it's very important that what you put out there is something positive. And being impatient is not a positive energy, right? Because again, when you get impatient, you tend to begin to get anxious, right? You get anxious, you, you get um, stressed out, or you worry, right? So it's not a very positive energy. So by being excited, you can be impatient, and by being impatient, you are putting out a lack of energy. That's my point. And being in that lack of, you know, lack of energy is not a really good thing. <laughs> because you are beginning to attract the things that you do not have. What you're putting out to the universe, to everyone, is that I can't wait. My person's not here with me. When is my person going to be here? You know, I can't wait. I am so excited to be with this person. So what you're putting out are the things that you lack, right? Because it's not here yet. And because that thing is not here yet, whether it's a person or whatever, it's not there yet. You're putting out that very lack energy. So it's really, really important that you're mindful of your own energies, Choose your energy. It's really something very, very amazing, you know. 
at first I was like so like I couldn't I couldn't understand like how come they were so freaking good how come that never happened this is way too impossible but again sooner or later through research and by talking to different psychics friends who became my friends that's when i realized that oh okay now i understand yes i was <laughs> actually in that energy that's why most of my psychic friends, I remember, every time I get a reading from them, they would actually tell me, hey, stop talking about it over and over again. Because in the Philippines, okay, and the Filipino culture, okay, we have this belief. We actually call it usog, mauusog, or magagalaw, all right, which can mean that things can change or it will be changed. So the more that you talk about it, all right, there might be some changes. You know, it can be usually negative. That's why it's better not to talk about it over and over again, right? So that's what we always, you know, um, do, that we are actually being taught not to always talk about it, overthink about it, stress yourself about it. Because either it will get jinxed, okay, whatever it is you want to call it. But yes, that's the term we actually call it. Mausog or magagalaw. All right. And speaking of that Filipino term or, yeah, um, what I also wanted to share is that all the more that you get impatient, all the more that you wait for it, okay? You wait for this thing to happen. Do you know that it will actually stagnate the process? The answer is yes. And this is something that I always share to people. The more that you wait for it, the more that you get impatient, the more that you get jumpy and testy, the more that you are stagnating the process. Because again, you don't believe. And again, because of your own energy, which is negative, it is delaying the process. That's why there is a term, divine timing. Surrender to the divine. Surrender and allow nature to take its course. Because, always know this, not everything is within our control. Okay? Always remember that. There are things that we really need to accept, to release, let go, to just go with the flow. All right? And another thing that I want to share before we wrap things up. Release expectations. And that's one of the hardest things I've ever, you know, learned. I'm still trying to learn it, actually. I'll be very honest because I'm no, I'm not a perfect person. Nobody is perfect. We make mistakes, right? We don't have to act as if we're, you know, really perfect human beings, okay? <laughs> we're not. But I'm sharing this because I've personally experienced it. It was so difficult, to be quite honest, okay? So try to release expect expectations. There is a saying, right? Expectations leads to disappointments. The more that we expect, right? Especially if you were given a specific date, let's say, just like what happened to me. You are expecting, right? You will expect the very exact thing to happen. And when we don't get it or when those things didn't happen the way we expected it to be, we get what? Really frustrated, we get disappointed, we get upset. That is why it is very, you know, um, wise to say it that way. It's very wise to just release any expectations. Just go with the flow. All right, just go with the flow. Do not overthink that. That's why our own energies and even other people's energies can affect the outcome 
of the reading. And lastly, what I wanted to say, let's just say, all right, let's just say you did all of those things. You never shared a soul. Or, I mean, you never shared that reading to any soul. OK, you were very positive. You're very, very positive. You are not very impatient and all that. OK, but then it still never happened. And here you go. You're going to ask, hey, I've done the work. I've done everything. I never shared anything to anyone. And I was so patient. OK, I was so patient. But how come it still didn't happen? Haven't you asked, how about the other person? How about their energies? Bingo, there you go. Because <laughs> we all have our free will. You have, you know, a free will, okay? You have the power yourself to say no, to walk away, to do this, to do that. Haven't you considered the other person? They have free will too. They are energies too, just like you. Like what I say, always say, we are all energies. So that's what I'm actually pointing at. Now, before I wrap things up, I also want to share that there's a difference when it comes to tarot reading versus vision, psychic visions, okay? I remember my good friend, who's a really awesome psychic. I totally miss her, okay? She would always tell me that psychic visions are something that is usually not changeable, okay? Psychic visions usually comes in a dream. Or it's just sudden, even though you're not asleep. But then all of a sudden, you will get that very strong, powerful vision. You would see it kind of like, a you know, watching a movie and all of a sudden you would see some images or some messages about what's going to happen. Usually those are the things that are actually not changeable or it's bound to happen. But that is actually, you know, not to say it's rare, but it doesn't happen 24 seven or it doesn't happen all the time. OK, so that's different from tarot readings. OK or any type of readings, that one is more of like a vision. And usually it happens, okay? All right, so there you go. Well, 32 minutes of me talking. Usually it's 40 minutes. I usually, you know, joke about the 40-minute recording, <laughs> okay? Oh, God, I miss those days. I usually, you know, always joke about 40 minutes of blabbing and all that. But anyway, I hope you were able to pick up something from this topic. All right. I will definitely share more once, you know, I have time because like what I say, I am also very much busy with a lot of things. I'm cooped up. So but when I have the time, I will again try to share some topics um, to you guys um, to keep you guys aware to be informed. I'm doing this because I want you guys to learn, okay? Just like what happened to me, all right? Remember, we are all teachers and pupils on this realm, right? I never wanted to appear as if, oh, I'm the all-knowing. I know everything. I don't like people like that, honestly, you know? People who pretend as if they are the all-knowing types. No, no. There is always something that we can learn from each other. I'm pretty sure there are a lot of things I'm going to learn from you, too. From you guys. You can even learn from a five-year-old kid. Come on. Right? So enough of the ego. Right? Especially spiritual ego. I don't like that. You know, because some people, they have that spiritual ego. And that's really unhealthy. Okay? Know that we are all human beings. Know that we are all energies. OK, and we are all connected in spirit. All right. So I hope, again, this topic gave you some thought. It gave you some something to think about. It gave you some added knowledge. And I will see you again on the next audio recording, whatever. Pick a card reading. <laughs> How about if I call this tarot tricks of the trade? <laughs> Just kidding. Anyway, there you go. Thank you, guys. I send you all the love. 
and the light. Bye-bye now.